We are live. Good evening and welcome to the second episode in the fifth series of In Conversation With. What a delightful day it's been here in the north of England. Let me know, has it been sunny where you are? I'd love to know. It has been glorious. So if I am, if I look a little bit shabby around the edges with my creased shirt and my kind of like humidity dried hair, I don't care because, you know, I've been enjoying the sun, which is awesome. Hey guys, thank you so much for joining me. So this evening's guest um, is going to be joining me shortly, fingers crossed. Um, and if you guys do not like him, I mean, I don't know if we can be friends <laughs> because Stephen is one of the nicest people I have ever met. He truly is a nice guy. Um, not only that, but he is proper on his game when it comes to digital marketing. Now, if you didn't know, Series 5 is all about, well, basically, I always say social media is powerful, right? But it isn't the be-all and end-all when it comes to your um, digital marketing strategy. So, in this series, I'm exploring some of the really good partners um, for social media. So last week, I hope you caught it, I started off the series talking to Laura Gosney about email marketing, and she writes the best emails, hands down, I have ever read. And this evening, I'm gonna be talking to Stephen, hopefully, if he joins us, I'm waiting for him to join us, come on, Stephen. Um, he's gonna be talking to us about website design. Now, Stephen runs the company SOS Creativity. I'm just gonna write, um, read his bio out whilst we're waiting for him. Oh, here he is. You, you're waving to me, Stephen. Come and uh, request to join in. <laughs> That's what I wanna see. Um, so Stephen is a university graduate and a university uh, dropout. I haven't read that wrong. I'm gonna get um, Stephen to explain that in a moment. But he's the managing director of SOS Creativity. He's got over 15 years. There you go, I'm just letting him in. He's got of uh, computing experience, website development, sales and marketing experience. He's massively passionate about helping and inspiring people to succeed and grow their businesses. He's the man himself. Hello, hello. How are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Where are you beaming in from? <laughs> I'm actually out and about at the moment because I've got a under-16s football match, first game of the season. But I forgot that was going to be tonight, so here I am. Have you double booked me, Stephen? I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> so top half, suit and uh, jacket. Bottom half, uh, football shorts. Bottom half is actually jeans rolled up and football boots. <laughs> Keeping it real. I love it. I love it. Right. Okay, so we've only got 20 minutes, right? Um, and I've just been singing your praises. And I said that if people don't enjoy what you have to say this evening, then I'm going to have to reconsider my friendship with them. Because you are <laughs> you are genuinely one of the nicest people I've ever met. But not just now. Oh, thank you. Like you're proper on it when it comes to digital marketing. And I know there's loads of people who want to find out more about what we've got to talk about this evening. But one of the things I just want you to clarify, just to prove that I didn't read out your bio incorrectly, I described you as a university graduate and also a university dropout. How does that work? Explain. Well, the, the university graduate and the university dropout, it's, it's an interesting story because I graduated with a first degree in computing and web development. And then after that, I was working in the industry, but I decided to go do master's. But then three months into the master's, I was like, this really isn't for me. And I ended up dropping out from University of Salford for the master's, which is where SOS Creativity started from, because I was like, you know what? This master's is not for me. What I really need to be doing is doing what I'm passionate about. And that's how SOS Creativity started. I love that bravery. And that is you all over, isn't it? You find something you're passionate, you put your entire energy behind it. And if something isn't working for you, then you kindly say, no thanks universe, I'm gonna leave that. I'm gonna go over there and do what I do best. Absolutely, and one of the things is pe people need to learn to 
not judge themselves on making decisions like that because most people would be like, you've paid for a master's and you, you've done three months, you've got, what, if you can stick it out, you've got another nine months to go and you'll have a degree. But I knew deep down within myself that degree was only going to be a degree on paper. It was never going to make any difference to what I was going to do. And I was like, rather than waste extra time, I might as well get started with what I really need to be doing. Amen. Preach, as my sister has just uh, commented down below. Absolute loads of hearts going up for you. I want to say, obviously, I described you as one of the nicest guys I've ever met, right? But, <laughs> I mean, you say as well, it's part of your values. You deliver on for uh, a positive return on investment for clients. And secondly, for everyone at SOS Creativity to come to work with a smile on their face. I want to know... And it's not just, it's that, and I, lo I know the way that you interact with your, your team, it's genuine, you really look after them. So I want to know, um, that human-led kind of like essence that you have, that is the heart of what you do, who are your role models? Where have you got that from? Well, one of the, the role models is actually looking at businesses that I've been a part of company-wise while working. And one of the things when I, I set out, when I started was, I want to create a company where I'd love to have been a part of when I was working. And which means if I feel that way, that means that whoever I bring into the company will want something similar. So it's a case of treat people how you'd like to be treated. And at the end of the day, you spend more time with the people you work with than other people. So it's important that you get along. I always said to the team, you, it's easy to demonstrate in sales. You could have the most successful salesperson but if that person doesn't understand the core values and isn't a part of the core values, they won't last at a company because you need, you need that core values and you can teach skills, but you can't teach value. You, so that's why it's a, it's a really big thing for me. Absolutely. So it's that saying, isn't it? Like similar to what you just said, hire for personality uh, and, and, and determination. And you can train them. You can train them in any area so long as they are there ready to give their all, knowing in return, you too are going to be there to support their journey. Absolutely. Absolutely. I say, I say to people, yeah, you hear the saying, the customers are always right. I don't believe in that. I say the customers are not always right, but they're never wrong. There's a subtle difference in that. And the way you can empower your team to do that is when you put your team first, they will always look after the customer. So most business looks at, right, customers, customers, customers. However, I look at it the other way. It's the team, the team, the team. Because if the team's happy, if the team comes to the office with a smile on their face, the customer's going to leave with a smile on their face anyway. So right, I, I just shortcut the process and do go with the team. There is so many love hearts going up for you, Stephen. I told you guys, this guy is so not nice and he's on it right i want to talk websites uh, we need another in conversation with just to talk about team kind of like integrity and leadership but we'll leave that for another day i want to ask about um websites so here's a, here's a question for you and you'll know your time does every business owner need a website and um once they so for instance i and a lot of people who are watching don't actually have a team around them so once they've got it live, which to me sometimes is like the easiest bit, how on earth do they maintain it? How do they keep it alive? It's a great question. And the, to answer the first part, 95 to 99% of businesses need a website. Like I said, I didn't say 100% because at the end of the day, it depends on the audience and what platform they're on. Okay. But 95 to 99% of businesses require a website because that is actually the foundation of your online presence because that's where people are reverting back to at the end of the day to make that important decision. So that's why 95 to 99% of businesses need it. When you're a small business, you need to be clever with how you optimize your time and how you optimize your finances. So one of the easiest ways to keep your website fresh is by if you can, if you can restrict yourself or if you can be disciplined enough is what I'm looking for to just say, right, one blog post per month. You don't have to do anything crazy. One blog post per month in the area of your industry that you're clearly good at, which is why you start a business in it. 
that's a way to keep your website fresh. And when you're consistent with that, Google's going to keep coming back and crawling your website, which means it's updated. It will help you with your SEO. You're able to then do a lot of other things because that blog can be used to add value to your customers, which then means it gives them a reason to keep coming back so they can then make that purchasing decision of, as of when they're ready. Mic drop, people. <laughs> Why, so what I heard there was consistency. So again, similar to what I say about social media and showing up, promise yourself, commit to um, creating content for your website um, and do it. But also make sure that it's really good, focus, values-driven uh, content for your audience. And therefore, they will keep coming back to you knowing that you will always be giving them really, really good stuff. Absolutely. And it's, it's the case of quality over quantity because most business owners want to write, I need to do this, I need to do this, I need to do that. But the reality is when you're running a business, there's a million and one different tasks you need to be doing. So you might not be able to get to that position where you're creating fresh content every single week. But if you spend that little half an hour extra to create that better content once every month, because of that consistency, because you've gone through doing the work to put the quality in there, it'll actually generate you a far better result than just throwing something out there every week. It's, all, it's similar to the reels that I put out today in terms of showing up, being consistent, quality-led content, and it will pay off. And that's the thing I imagine with, when you're creating your website, you're, you're putting content on there, you've got to be consistent. And it's a, and it's a relatively long-term game as well, isn't it? You can't put up one blog post, I imagine, and then instantly overnight receive tons and tons of leads. If, if that was how it works, I'd be a multi, multi billionaire by now. <laughs> so yeah, I, absolutely. It, do, it doesn't work that way. And yeah, when, when you're consistent with it, it does, it does pay off in the long run. And I want to pick up on something because we've both touched on content and quality over quantity there. So tell me, how, how do you think websites and social media work together? What makes them really great partners? Well, about 10 years ago, most customers see a business credible when they have a website. Fast forward to today, I think the stats is 86% of all customers expect the brand to have an active social media presence. No, 86% of customers trust the business when they have an active social media presence yeah like i said your website is the foundation of your online presence but you have to adapt with the times which is where social media comes in so when you can complement both because you're you have a professional website which your audience revert back to because that's the foundation then you're creating phenomenal content on social media to drive traffic through to that website that's a marriage made in heaven a marriage media, that's music to my ears. And going back to the point that you made about quality content, and say if you're committed to one blog post a month, the really smart way, and I often talk about this when it comes to social, about managing your time uh, really well, <coughs> it really is about thinking, well, how can I repurpose the content I've already got? So if you've created this really brilliant blog post that you spent a good, you know, a solid 30 minutes uh, writing, there's no reason why you can't turn that into four or five different tweets, maybe a TV, a quick reels, uh, something that can go up on your YouTube channel. It is about using that one piece of content really smartly and adapting it to your different environments, right? If you, if you don't mind, I want to do something slightly different. What's, your, what's the core of your audience? And then we're going to make it quite practical. What type of sector is the core of your audience? Mine? Yeah. Are you interviewing me now? Like no, that. no, no. I just want to bring as much value as I can. Oh, oh, so the people who are watching, they're mainly um, solo or small business owners. Uh, for, in what, in what pack, variety, kind of sector? Retail? A variety, it's ten, uh, yeah, some in retail, some in education. Um, yeah, there's a kind of like a, a, a split. Some in marketing right. as well. So let, let's, let's do this then. So let's assume one of your, one of your audience is in the retail space, right? So they sell, I don't know, for easy, for easy exam. I have an actual live example. So one of the yeah. people watch it, one of the viewers now is Kalima. She owns Spice Drive. Now Spice Drive, solo business owner, sells organic spices as well as um, 
uh, very environmentally friendly kitchen. Perfect. So what that person can do is they can write a blog post on, I don't know, top five spices you should have in every kitchen, right? So that's a blog post that can come up with like 500 to 1,000 words. And then what you can do is you can take the headline of the five spices, create it into a PDF and use as LinkedIn cards. Then what you can do is you can take, you can talk about each spice for 30 seconds for a reel. Then what you can do is you can do a quick video on all of the spices, giving advantages, pros and cons, and the health benefits, and put that on YouTube as a long-form video. Then you can chop that into small bits and use that on maybe Twitter, for example, or Facebook, for example. Then you can do a demonstration of you cooking with one of the spices on a live environment in your kitchen and go live on Instagram or go live on Facebook for, a, for like a behind-the-scenes. But because you've written that blog content, it sits on your website. All the other additional pieces of content that you're then creating for social will add so much, much impact into it. And to top it all off, you can jump on Quora where people are asking questions about spices. Send them a link to your blog post with some answers to add more value. Just from that one piece of content, you have a month to three months worth of extra additional content. And because you put that quality rather than the quantity, it's going to add way more value to your online presence. Amazing. Completely, completely right. Exactly what I talk about. My You're getting so much love. So here's Spice Drive. Kaleem has put, that is massively helpful. It is about looking at quality pieces to start with and then looking at smart ways to be able to repurpose those across your digital marketing. That is Absolutely. Great. Everyone is loving your energy levels as well, Stephen. If you have any questions specifically for Stephen, you can use the question mark button in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Send us a question. If we've got time, I will ask Stephen to ask, answer that for you. Um, quickly, I know you've already given us loads and loads of tips, but top three things, someone wanting to get a website or maybe revive one, that they set up a while back, but then left to die um, in a corner. What top three tips to get that energy back into their website? What do they need to do? First thing I would say is get great visuals. <coughs> yeah. If you can afford to use your own photography or videography, fantastic. If you can't, it might be worth that investment to get a premium stock library rather than the free ones because the free ones, every image you see on there are on millions of other websites. So if you can invest in your own bespoke con uh, content, photography and videography, fantastic. If you can't, use a premium stock library. The second thing is to sit down and think about your audience because when you think about your audience, you actually create your content for them. And when you do that, that's, they're going to be able to resonate with the business, with the company a lot more. And then the final piece of the puzzle is create it in a way that it's simple for you to update and simple for you to uh, think about the future. Because when you're creating your website, when you're small, you want to think about your website in 18 to three years, pushing four or five years, depending on the budget. The ideal sort of, I did a video on this a while back. The ideal sort of time scale in terms of updating your website is about three years, give or take. But when you're small, you want to you want to invest for the long term and not have to keep spending that budget. Yeah. So what I would say is great content because we're visual people as human beings. So if you're using great visuals, that will help. Think about your audience and create the content for them. And finally, think about the future so it's in a way that it will last a long time. Awesome, awesome, awesome. We've got a couple of questions, I think, that have come through. Um, <laughs> so my friend Laura is saying, can Stephen read my daily affirmations? The voice, the energy, um, I, which I love. Um, yes, I'm sure Stephen is up for that. And then, <laughs> uh, maybe, I'm talking as his agent here. Is there anything we should steer clear of on social or is there nothing to say no to? And that's from Kalima. Good question, Kalima. Great question. And, and when it comes to marketing, you need to test. However, you need to be strategic in the way you test. The rule of thumb, the golden rule of thumb when it comes to social media is, yes, there are millions and one different platforms. Yes, there are some hot platforms as well. However, where is your audience? Who is the ideal customer? When you work from that perspective, 
you're going to be able to test strategically. You're going to know what platforms to be a part of, and then you're you're able to understand what you need to stay clear of and what you don't need to stay clear of. Because what most people do is, I need to open Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Snapchat, all of it. But the reality is, if your audience, for the most part, they're going to really use about two to three of them yeah. as their primary platform. That's where you need to focus on. Should you experiment? Absolutely, when you've got the resources. But I wouldn't spread yourself too thin because someone said something is great and you feel like you're going to miss out if you don't try it. Think about your audience. That will help guide your decisions. That is a perfect note to end this on. We are out of time, Stephen. I want to thank you so much for multitasking and being on the show this evening. You've it's my pleasure. Major, uh, mic drop, truth bombs, however the kids say it these days. It was fabulous. My audience loved you. Thank you so much for your insights and your, and your, uh, your energy and your brilliance as well. It's my pleasure. I hope, um, I hope your football game goes really well this evening. Well, right now, it looks like we've got a penalty, so our fingers crossed we can score. Do you guys <laughs> want to see? It was happening right as we were talking. <laughs> Is there nothing that this man cannot do? That's the good <laughs> thing. I'm going to leave it just there. Thank you so much for joining us live this evening. It's been a pleasure. Oh, that's fantastic. Right, for those of you who are watching me this evening, please join me next week, same time, 7 o'clock, when I'm going to be talking to a katsu-loving podcasting queen. But that is it for this evening. Enjoy your evening, Stephen. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.